be glad and rejoice with all your heart. That is from Zephaniah the prophet. I have a question for you today, and it is simply this. What does joy look like? Think about that for a minute. What does joy look like? To some, it might look like that. Or joy with a purpose. This next one, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> it's just sheer joy. Even the camel. As a pastor, we get to walk through people's lives a little bit with them, and it is truly a joy to do that. And uh, I've, seen, I've seen some brides that look like that. And I've seen some grooms with even bigger smiles. The joy of a mother holding her newborn baby. There's not much more than that, is there? But then that baby starts to grow. And soon it's the joy of the baby knowing that his mother is there. And as we go through our lives, different moments cause joy. This is a photograph of a woman who just found out that she is cancer free. Look at that smile and that anticipation. And when we're together for enough years, joy starts to look like that. <laughs> we're just happy to have each other and happy to be able to spend another day together. As Christmas approaches, joy is going to look like that around the table with the family. And for the children, of course, the presents under the tree bring an awful lot of joy. And for the merchants, going to the bank and putting that deposit in uh, makes Christmas just a little bit better. An interesting study was done just recently. And they, the ones who did the study said that uh, this has changed in the last 10 years or so. It's called the U graph of joy. Let me describe it to you. On the left-hand side is the level of joy in a person's life at age 18 to 21. On the far right-hand side is the level of joy, psychological well-being, it's described here, but it's really joy, in those who are 82 to 85. And notice what happens in the middle. It goes way down. The lowest level of joy is 53 years old on that graph. Guess how old I am. <laughs> Nothing but up from here. <laughs> I find this fascinating. And you can look at it psychologically, and it's true, that you, know, you start out all ambitious and ready to go in your 20s, and then life hits. And uh, you're the one responsible for the payroll and for the staff and for whatever you do for a living, for the patients, for uh, the family and the finances, and uh, it gets heavy, and it does suck the joy out of uh, one's life. And then as that responsibility is lessened toward retirement, but that doesn't explain the 85-year-olds being the most joyful, does it? Except maybe from what I learned from my dear mother, who is 88. And she is still serving the Lord, but she knows her time on this earth is limited, and she has great joy knowing where she's going, and she's not afraid. Could that be it? What is the secret? What is the key to true joy? Zephaniah, I believe, gives us this in his book. And I would encourage you, if you have the stomach for it, it's not a very long book, only three chapters, hard to find, but you can find it in your Old Testament, to read this book. Chapter 1, 1 through 3, 8 is literally brutal. It is Zephaniah's prediction of the judgment of God on his people who are turning their back on him, on his people who are going after false gods and not paying attention to anything the true God has to say, there will be consequences. But then after that brutality and that grief, 
in our text comes joy. That's a paradox of Christian life. Law, gospel, consequences, judgment, and yet joy. Grief, and we're told in Scripture to grieve with those who grieves. Grieve and joy, and we're told to be joyful with those who rejoice. It comes down to this. There is one source for biblical joy, and that is God. Think of all those pictures I showed you a few minutes ago. Every single one of those pictures represents something temporary. Even the people in our lives are temporary. The picture of the woman who found out she doesn't have cancer, I'll share with you that we rejoiced like that with my brother-in-law, my wife's brother Jim, when he was diagnosed with cancer, but crazy chemotherapy treatments and so forth worked and he was doing so well but we found out yesterday that tomorrow he goes on hospice care it appears as if the battle will be lost we had that joy and we knew it would only be temporary but Jim that's his name and the rest of us have the one thing needful to make joy last eternity. And that is our relationship with God, begun often at baptism, carried through our lives, receiving from Him what we need. Jeff Zephaniah describes that a little bit in 3.15. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy that's the promise and not only is that promise for eternity but right now the Lord the King of Israel is with you never again will you feel any harm even when the worst happens even when the tragedies like we saw in Connecticut happen even when our lives are turned upside down by cancer by disease or by death he is with us and he gives us joy. One pastor wrote this, uh, and I thought it was very well said. When our joy is in anything or anyone other than the Lord, it can be stolen or taken away because all apart from God is temporary. And he continues, when our joy is in the Lord, it cannot be taken away or stolen because he is eternal and what he promises to do he does jesus words john 16 22 now is your time of grief but i will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds strong and true in that joy in our Savior. Amen.